One of the tools that writers use when they're revising is making a snapshot. So this little lesson's going to give you an idea about how to go about doing that and how to use snapshots in your writing to make it more effective. Snapshot, of course, is a good old-fashioned word for a photograph, which is a good old-fashioned word for a picture. When you're creating snapshots in your writing, what you are doing is creating a picture not just in sights, but with all of the senses, sounds. You're creating an experience so that your reader can truly be right inside of that scene that's going on. Let's look at an example of a snapshot. This is from Laura Ingalls Wilder's book, um, Little House on the Prairie. Ma kissed them both and tucked the covers in around them. They lay there a while looking at Ma's smooth parted hair and her hands busy with sewing in the lamplight. Her needle made little clicking sounds against her thimble and then the thread went softly swish through the pretty calico that Pa had traded furs for. As I said, you can get a sense of sights in here and there are sounds, the quick clicking needle and the thread swishing through. One of the ways that you create a snapshot is by using the zoom lens on your mental camera. We can see it happen in this scene. We start out just with a picture of Ma in our head, but as we read along through the author's words here, we zoom in on Ma's head, her smooth parted hair, and then her hands, and then even closer on the actual sewing she's doing, right down to the very kind of fabric she's using. Let's look at another example. This one from a story we read together near the beginning of the year, Priscilla and the Wimps by R Richard Peck. There's a line near the beginning, and we just met Monk Clutter, remember our big main bully who gets shut in the locker at the end? But we learn about Monk, that he doesn't ever touch money. And then we have this line. The gang he ran, which ran the school for him, was his collection agency. Now if I were working backwards out of Richard Peck's words, I might draw a picture something like this in my mind. Of course in my mind it looks better because you know what a fabulous artist I am. But I might have this picture of these big tough guys with their short crew cuts and muscles. And they're sort of coming down the hallway after me for money. But then Richard Peck turns the zoom a little bit and we get this next line. They were Clutter's Cobras. Just that name alone helps me zoom in further on these guys. I get a picture, this nasty dude's face his muscles, he's coming even closer to me. He's got this big cobra on his shirt, right? Richard Peck takes me right into this visualization. And that second sentence finishes. They were Clutter's Cobras, a name spelled out in nail heads on six well-known black plastic windbreakers. Aha! I can correct my visualization of a guy coming down the hall in a cobra's shirt and I can zoom in even further and see these nail heads on this black jacket that's right in front of me. In just a matter of two sentences, Richard Peck took me from this broad view of a gang into this very zoomed in view of exactly what these guys are wearing and helping me visualize better helps me get into the story more. So it's an effective technique for an author to use to engage their reader. So I'd like to you, you to give this a try. I want you to think of a scene that's in your story, the one that you are drafting, that you are writing with your own characters and conflict and ideas. And I want you to make about a quarter size piece of paper sketch of that scene. 
underneath the sketch, write a description of what's going on in there. It doesn't have to be just what's visually there on the paper, but also capture what sounds, potentially what smells would be there, what physical sensations. Is there wind? Is it still? Is there you know, rain pelting down on someone's face, etc.? Then I want you to look at that first picture and choose a part that interests you, maybe a particular character, maybe a particular part of the scenery, and zoom in, turn your camera, zoom, lens into this object or this person, and make a second quarter of a sheet of paper, roughly sized sketch. Now don't be taking a long time on these sketches, by the way. They should only take a couple of minutes to make. The idea is not to make a frameable piece of art, but to help engage your mind in truly being aware of the entire scene you're trying to create so that you can then put it into words underneath that sketch. So you're going to capture this second sketch again in a description, and you're going to repeat it at least one more time, possibly a fourth time as well, until the words that you're writing underneath have really shown your reader what's going on. And remember, I'm using shown not just in a visual sense, but you've really taken your reader and placed them inside all the physical sensations that are going on in that scene. Go ahead, give it a try.